Hello everyone, the Instant Camera Guy here. Uh, welcome to what is another 680 video. I think the SLR 680 has got to be flavor of the month at the moment. And boy has this one seen better days. This camera was donated to me by a very good uh, client and friend of mine uh, named Mina. And uh, yeah, he, I believe, picked this up very cheaply at I think a camera market or something like that. And uh, yeah, boy oh boy, is this thing in sorry shape. Uh, so let's just give you the tour of, um, <laughs> the tour of everything that's wrong with this thing. Starting with the massive crack in the sonar housing. Uh, giving access to all of the um, high voltage bits inside. That's exactly what you want when you're shooting a camera. Access to uh, what could be up to 300, and, uh, uh, 300 volts or so. So we've got that. Uh, the next thing to notice is that the lens board has completely snapped a leg. So the entire lens board is junk basically needs to be replaced. Obviously the leather is in terrible shape. We have scuffs on the rear viewfinder sticker. Uh, the transducer is dented and bent to all heck, um, like it's been smashing against something. Door latch works, which is nice. Um, but the sonar I haven't been able to test because, and I'll show you guys, um, oh yeah, the pick arm, that doesn't move at all. The faceplate for the logo has just turned into absolute mush, like there's nothing left of the logo other than these sort of primary colors. Um, and when you, have a, when you have a look under the housing, you'll quickly notice the reason that the autofocus doesn't seem to work. And that is because half of the switch assembly is just missing. So the way that a 680 works with its autofocus switch, there's basically uh, two terminals that constantly touch each other inside the autofocus housing. And when those terminals are touching, motor is uh, the motor that powers all the, uh, the autofocus mechanism is powered. Well, when you push in the little autofocus to manual focus button on the front of the housing, what happens is that plastic, it pushes on one of the switches so that they are no longer connected. And that cuts the circuit, cuts power to the motor, and allows you to manually focus. Um, in this case, <laughs> half that switch is just straight up missing. And I honestly, I don't know how that can even happen. Um, this camera must have taken one hell of a knock, is all I can think. Um, but yeah, uh, what you guys can't see on camera is the sheer amount of fungus in the viewfinder, uh, internal mirror assembly and Fresnel screen, and the oxidization on the Fresnel screen, um, all of which basically make this a camera where, I mean, technically I could probably fix everything, but the amount of parts required would start to become a bit of a ship of Theseus. It's certainly all possible. but. Rather than do that and end up with a very boring Polaroid SLR 680, I thought, why don't we have some fun with this thing? And uh, just use a little something that I prepared earlier. This here is the chrome body from an SX70 sonar. Um, it's something that I acquired last year in a trade, and this is something that I've already refurbished. I've had this just sitting here, waiting around, all that this needs to be completed is a shutter and some leather. And so I thought, well, considering I'm going to be rebuilding this shutter anyway, wouldn't it be cool to make a chrome and tan SLR 680? Well, if you like to see that kind of custom stuff, then stay tuned for the rest of this video. I'm going to tear down this body until it's just the shutter. We are going to put this damaged body off to the side. We are going to repair the shutter here and ultimately make a really nice looking chrome SLR 680. And if I get stock of parts, maybe we'll even do a Bluetooth PCB conversion. Let's see what happens. All right, we are back. It is the next day. 
I have completely stripped down that SLR 680 body. We are really just going to be focusing on the shutter and we are going to be attempting to rectify all that was wrong with it. Now, I have not really been able to test this shutter's autofocus mechanism. I have tested and confirmed that the shutter itself does work, which is nice. That tells me that the PCB at the back here is in functional condition. And I must say that this particular PCB, when I was opening up the camera before, this certainly has some signs of being repaired in the past. So I would say that this particular camera was sent to, uh, back to the factory at some stage. Uh, when I took the bellows off, because those bellows on that black SLR 680 body actually had a hole in them, um, I discovered that the rivets that held the lens board on had actually been replaced at some stage. They were not the factory ones. And there's certainly evidence that this PCB has been resoldered before. This is not factory solder, but repairman solder. Um, it's not the best soldering job I've ever seen, but it's certainly not the worst. Um, but this autofocus mechanism will not work at the moment. And the reason that it won't work, I actually have, uh, this is the mechanism from an SX-70 sonar. The PCB on these are basically the same, they're interchangeable. And what you'll actually notice, there's a little switch assembly here made out of copper terminals. Um, maybe I'll get my phone out and just take a little bit of B-roll so that you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about here. Um, but really, right here, if I get a little screwdriver, right here sits a terminal and this solder pad to the right of that is supposed to sit another little uh, brass terminal like you see here on that PCB. That is what it is supposed to look like. It's supposed to have two little brass terminals that touch each other, All right? And when those brass terminals are touching each other, it sends power to the motor and the entire autofocus assembly. And what happens when you hit the light dark switch on the uh, front shutter housing, it pushes this terminal down and cuts power to all the autofocus mechanism, thus allowing you to manually focus the camera. Um, now with that bit missing, this is never gonna work. So I do wonder, does the autofocus mechanism on this work at all? Is it completely dead? Um, and has some kind of repairman disabled this switch? Because that would certainly be a way to do it. I've seen these switches become disabled before. Um, where effectively a client back in the day would have gone, ah, oh, you know what, if it's too expensive to repair the autofocus, just disable it uh, so that it can never power on and then I can just manually focus the camera. So that may be the case, but certainly to find out, we're gonna need to install that switch back in. Uh, the transducer as well is also totally trashed. Uh, this thing is in really rough shape, it's super dented. I actually have one from a Polaroid 660 AF, which is in immaculate condition. Uh, they are the same transducer, they, did, they do the same job despite this coming from a Polaroid 600 and not the folding SLR. It is the same part, so I'm gonna swap that over onto this as well. So, I think what I'm gonna just start by doing, I'm just gonna pull this old transducer over to the side before I replace anything. Uh, I do wanna get that switch replaced. Um, this is not a repair I've ever done before because honestly, it's so weird. Like this is just not something I've ever seen or could have ever really foreseen having to do. Um, but I can see what needs to be done. So hopefully this won't be too tricky. I think the trickiest thing about this repair is going to be that this piece of copper here, it's quite large. And uh, that means that it may take a bit of effort to heat up. And I'll probably need to use some pliers or tweezers to hold that piece in because it's gonna get quite hot otherwise. So I got my pliers here. I've also got some needle nose pliers just in case. Uh, we'll figure out the best way to do this. Um, so I reckon the best thing that I can do to start off with just while everything's apart, I'm gonna add some fresh solder to that pad. And now we're gonna come here to this scrap PCB and I'm gonna to attempt to just heat up this and slide it off. Oh, well that was pretty easy. And I'm gonna do the same thing and just tin the, I mean, look how small this part is, ridiculous. Again, I'm just gonna tin the bottom of that. 
And so what should happen now, when I put this part here and in place, the fresh solder should really want to stick nicely together. Um, do you know what I might do actually? I might just remove some of the old solder from this switch because I've realized it's actually far too thick between the old stuff and the new stuff. I might just get rid of a bunch of it because I, I don't need that much. I'll just give that pad a bit of a clean. I just want to make sure that this is just going to be a nice easy job. All right, now hold that thought guys. I can hear my little greyhound Luna at the door. She wants to come in and hang out with me, so hold that thought. All right, she is back and with me. Uh, yeah, whenever I do these repairs, nine times out of 10, my dog Luna is in the back, sitting in the room, enjoying my company. And uh, yeah, she was downstairs before and uh, I, started work without her and I could hear her come upstairs and start looking for me. So uh, basically that little terminal has to go there. I think instead of pliers, probably the easiest thing to do is, hmm, let's, let's think, because I've got to really line everything up here. I think just using a little tool like a screwdriver is going to be best. Um, and I will just try and heat things up. This is going to be very fiddly. What is the best way of doing this? Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Is it going to be best to use pliers? Like so. Or is it going to be best to just use my fingers? The problem with using fingers is that I'm going to get burnt. Um, but not if I heat up the bottom pad. just as I thought that the two halves together are pretty thick, so. All right, I got an idea. A little bit more solder there. So because these are quite large pieces, uh, the problem that you'll have when it comes to soldering them is a large piece of metal will hold a lot of mass and thus hold a lot of extra heat. Um, so you have to have the piece in place for a longer period of time and you've got to let it cool for a longer period of time. There we go. That's gonna work. It's not quite lined up. I think I'm going to see if I can just do a better job. I mean, that is going to do the trick, but I just want to see, maybe I can just bend the little tab so that the dimples line up. It is so close to being factory original. Um, now, I mean, if I didn't have a spare part, I, I kind of could have just made a new terminal for this. It's not exactly a super special shape. It's it's really just, like I don't even think I need to align this particularly well. Um, I'm just being a real stickler about it just because these are very expensive little cameras. Well, they, they are now. And uh, I don't want anything going wrong with this switch in the future. But yeah, this is, this is pretty, there we go. Ah, there we go. Okay. That is now lining up nicely. All right. Much, much, much better. All right. So what I'm going to do is take the transducer out. Now there are two leads that go to this transducer. The insulated wire connects to the little uh, copper colored part whereas the bare wire goes on the black, like the front housing. 
and I'm just making sure that this is the same. They are completely identical. And I'm just gonna wire, uh, wire. I mean, I'm just gonna remove the little clips very carefully. This transducer wire can be a little bit fragile. There we go. Take that off there. So it's just worth taking your time. And one brand new transducer. Now that old transducer, despite being beat up, it probably would have worked, probably. But it looks really gross. And if I'm gonna be selling this camera, I want it to look nice. So one shiny new transducer. Uh, broken Polaroid 660s are a really great source of transducers because the flash covering on them always protects them. So you'll always find these in really nice condition of a 660 or a 670 AF. And yeah, we can see that little terminal now is actually touching. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, further dismantle this because I also have to replace this plastic housing because it's got a giant chunk missing from the side. And it actually exposes part of the flash circuitry. So theoretically, someone could get electrocuted uh, if they decided to poke their fingers in there. So. I am just gonna disconnect this flash. Now, it has not had any power going to it, so it really shouldn't be uh, any risk of zapping me. Um, but you always wanna just be careful just in case. Um, let's try to get that ribbon cable out of here if it wants to come. It's being particularly stubborn. All right, doesn't want to come off nicely, so I'll take the rest of the flash housing apart first. I don't really like yanking on ribbon cables if I can help it. Just put the screws that hold on that housing just off to the side. And actually maybe I'll, th these screws just need to be a little bit loose. Uh, in order to take the housing off. Probably don't need to remove them all the way. All right, let's now see if, uh, let's get myself a cloth here to work on just so I don't mark any of these panels. All right, so that side's coming out nicely and pop the other side out like so. And now we can pull that ribbon out a little easier so I should just be able to, there we go, come in the back and do that. So I actually have a brand new replacement housing from Retrospect. Uh, Retrospect make brand new housings right here. This, is, this actually has some parts in it because I was starting to use it for another project and then never finished it um, because the parts I was trying to use ended up quite broken. Um, and I've got a few little screws here to hold things in. Now, as I said, Retrospect do make rather nice quality brand new housings. Um, however, one of the things I find, um, they give you some new screws to use with it, but the screws that they actually provide um, are too long. And so when I got these housings, they gave me instructions and the instructions said, uh, please screw in the screws all the way uh, as tight as you can. And I did that. See, these are the, the silver screws that they actually provided. They're too long. I did that and the screws poked all the way through the housing and onto the other side. So I was quite annoyed at retrospect and sent them an angry email and they replaced the screws for me for free. But I actually have some proper Polaroid screws which should do a much better job. I believe the thread fits. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I am. Um, yeah, I wasn't particularly happy about that. Uh, so do be aware if you buy one of the new retrospect housings um, that that can happen. Yeah, they just, 
I didn't measure them properly. Now, the other thing about the Retrospect housings, um, another company called Polar Studio also makes these housings. Retrospect, they literally will just give you the bare housing. You've got to supply all the other parts yourself. So the switch, you've got to supply the um, autofocus on and off assembly, and you've got to install that onto the new housing. Um, Polar Studio, their new housings, you get everything. So you don't need to do any of this stuff. Um, now I must say that retrospect to their credit, this is a very good quality product. The finish of the plastic is very nice, um, but it's just that little bit annoying that you have to do those extra steps. So I've taken the switch out uh, and the switch has these two little copper terminals that just sit loosely um, behind the plastic housing of the switch. And I do not like that they sit loosely there. I am gonna glue them in because these are really small little bits of metal and you will lose them otherwise. Why Polaroid didn't fix them in place, I'm not sure, but I'm certainly gonna get some epoxy and glue them in place. And you don't need a lot, just enough to just tack them in and it makes reassembling this thing just that much easier. So the glue can just hold in these little switches. See, that's one. I'll just do the other side. And trust me, when it comes to reassembly, this is gonna be so much easier. There we go. And that's it. Now, they won't fall out, right? Because otherwise what happens, as you're trying to put everything together, you've kind of got to like, it's very, very awkward to like orient everything and use gravity to your advantage so that those little metal clips don't fall out. Very irritating to do. Uh, so I just like to glue them in. So while that glue is drying, we'll just put that off to the side in the little parts bin. And I'll continue to focus on the rest of the camera. Now, this flash also has some like dark marks on the front. I think it's just like crumbling leatherette, but I'm gonna see if I can give that a bit of a clean. Yeah, so that's coming straight off. Get a bit of lens cleaner. I just wanna make sure that this is all, because it's much easier to do this while everything is off the camera. Uh, we don't want to lose any of those little screws. So I'm just going to put them in my little parts tin there. Uh, and then while we're over on this side of the flash, I'm just going to clean the switch terminals with some alcohol. Now, if you have problems with the SLR680 not firing the flash, you can come and re-tin these little pads with a bit of solder. Um, sometimes these switches just get oxidized over time. These ones look really good, and I do know that the flash worked just fine, but that switch is important to clean those pads if you're having trouble. All right. So, what I'm gonna do is just come with our freshly glued switch here. making sure it's completely clean. And we can put that in like so into the new retrospect housing. And then we can come with our flash PCB, which has not been powered up. Please remember that these are very high voltage inside, uh, 360 volts, 300 microfarads of capacitance, certainly enough to give you one hell of a good zapping. And I'm gonna see, hopefully these screws that I have, I stole these screws, I think from the inside of like a Polaroid 1200 FF or something like that. They're not the screws that Retrospect supplied uh, with the reason being, like I described before, the Retrospect screws are too long. 
<laughs> so they don't work properly. Um, but these screws that I took from the inside of a 1200 FF are actually much more similar in design to the um, uh, original screws that would have been in like the Polaroid 690. Uh, because the original, the 680 uses plastic lugs with little clips. And those clips tend to break over time because this is made of, well, you can see very brittle plastic. Um, and so these screws are little stubby screws, very similar to those found in the 680, uh, sorry, the 690. The 690, the Japanese made SLR, uses uh, Phillips head screws, Japanese international standard. Oh. Now, oh my goodness, one of the things I also don't like about the retrospect back, when you hold in this side of the, the flash, like this, the channels that they've used for the flash switch are so tight. You kind of have to put in the screw a little loose. So what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna swap that screw out that I got from the 1200 FF. I am gonna use the retrospect screw and I'm just gonna screw it in halfway because this side is it's just way too tight otherwise. And you can't use the flash. <laughs> like the switch, you almost need a screwdriver to press it. So, retrospect, I really like your product, but do something about the molding here. It's, it's a little annoying. Like you're so close to a great product, but so far at the same time. Oh my goodness, and the screws do not fit my screwdriver as well as the other ones do. Jeez. Uh, I, I, I feel like a lot of products that Retrospect make are really great, like, 80% and then like they just drop the mark on that last 20%. There's always just something a little bit off. Okay. Yeah, and that's just what I'm gonna have to do uh, in order to make that switch clickable. It's just a thing, a retrospect themselves will tell you, don't screw the screw in all the way, uh, leave it a little bit loose um, so that you can still move the switch backwards and forwards. If you tighten it in all the way, you're just never gonna be able to move that switch. All right. So, while I'm here, I can just investigate the rest of the insides. Um, and I can continue to prepare the rest of the back. Uh, the rest of the housing, I mean, not the back. But we'll just want to clean this up. Other than a little bit of superficial dust, the rest of it looks pretty good. Um, but yeah, as you can see, like the finish on Retrospect's SLR680 housings, really, really good. But like just the way that the switches work, like I'm not super stoked about it. They do fit together really well though. It's just like they were so close to an incredibly amazing product. They just dropped the ball at the last second. I guess it's a minor complaint, but it is still valid and that's just how i roll you guys will find if you haven't already noticed i'm quite brutally honest with the stuff i fixed and the opinions i give on it like if i don't think something's good i'm gonna say it if i think something could be improved i'm gonna say it i refuse to outright simp for various different companies. I prefer honest feedback. All right, so there's a little arm that connects to the focus assembly that you wanna plug the flash into. So I've just made sure that that's in there. And that's pretty much as done as I want this shutter housing at the moment. I am just gonna put the little auto focus switch inside the new housing so that it's all ready and all finished. Um, the other thing 
that you need to salvage with these retrospect housings is you need to salvage the original faceplate. Now this one is really destroyed, like all the color is missing off the logo. Fortunately, I have a single spare one left, so it's gonna end up looking much nicer than what the uh, faceplate says currently. Uh, but yeah, I'm just gonna remove the inside of the original cracked. I mean, the front of this housing isn't terrible other than the, the little corner. Um, but certainly the new one is in far better condition. Uh, the other thing that I'll note about the retrospect backs, and I think the Polar Studio backs as well are, are guilty of this. Um, because the molds are ever so slightly different, you can't really use them with original panels. So you can't have like the rear original and the front new. Um, you can't use like a hybrid. You have to replace back and front. Because I've tried, uh, I actually had two 680s, one had a damaged rear panel and one had a damaged front panel. So I thought, hey, you beauty, I know what I'll do. I'll, um, <laughs> I'll buy one retrospect housing and split it between two cameras because I don't need all those parts. Uh, -bow, you cannot do that. Um, there's a little spring on the side of the switch. Now one design improvement that Retrospect did, instead of making it a little clip, they've made it a little loop, like a little tunnel for that spring to go into. And it is a far better design than what Polaroid came up with. So I do really appreciate that. Now, if you can just get your switch moldings right, we'll be on to a winner. Um, I do believe as well that Retrospect has changed the instruction booklet that came with these um, that came with these housings uh, to reflect how it's supposed to go together. I believe that they the little instruction card that they give you no longer tells you to put the screws in all the way uh, to be gentle with them. And of course, you could just snip the screws to the appropriate length if you wanted to. Uh, but yeah, we've I've added the autofocus on/off switch from the original housing. So this housing is now complete. It's ready to go together. I'm not going to finish doing that though until uh, I'm very happy with the shutter and everything is clean. Um, so I'll just tighten up the screws that I loosened. Now, the reason that I loosened the screws, by the way, they can poke through the rear of the chassis and just catch on the back panel, making it harder to take off. I like to just loosen them. It makes the whole thing slide out a lot easier. Um, so I think what I'll do, now that I've repaired that little autofocus switch, I'll put this thing together on the chrome body that I had prepared before. And we'll just test it and see if it works. I definitely know that this body functions. Um, as I said, I'm not 100% finished with this shutter yet. I think what I'm gonna do is upgrade this thing to become an SX70R. So we have a really awesome chrome and tan SLR 680 with full manual control over Bluetooth if you want it. Brand new circuit board, et cetera, et cetera. I think that's gonna be the most awesome thing to do with this camera because I really wanna build something special. But for the time being, I do just want to get it together and just test at least that autofocus assembly, because if it doesn't work, I'm gonna need to find more parts before I can finish this thing. I, I really hope it works. <laughs> if not, I'm gonna have to do another opto sensor repair. And if you guys saw my last video, you'll know how much I really love doing that. Um, but seriously, if, if the opto sensor does need doing on this, I will be doing it off camera. It's just, it's too fiddly. I don't like doing it. It requires way too much concentration to do it and film every single time. At the same time, you know, I've had, I've got enough ex sort of experience to pretty much work on autopilot at this stage, but that is a job that really demands your focus. So now that I've done one of those opto sensor swap videos, I probably won't do another one anytime soon. All right. Moment of truth. Um, let's just put the front housing. Oh, seriously? The little autofocus switch thing just completely came off. Man, this, this 680, I tell you, was abused. <laughs> now that's not impossible to repair, but I'm gonna have to put a tiny screw in it. So I can't be bothered fixing that at the moment. 
so I'm just going to grab another panel. Bear with me. Um, actually, do you know what? We don't need panels. Where we're going, we don't need them. I'll just bridge them with a screwdriver instead. Promising. Um, yeah. That actually works. I can't believe it. I can scarcely believe it. Beautiful. Well, that makes me very happy. So the reason that this wasn't working in the end was simply just that switch was missing. Um, I honestly don't know how either. I really don't know how that switch could have gone AWOL. Um, it just must not have been soldered on very well from the factories, all I can think of. Um, but that does mean that I'm gonna pause this for the time being in terms of this part of the repair. I am gonna wait until I have stock of the new uh, PCB and uh, we're gonna pick up in just a second where I left off here. Well, 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 that couldn't have timed better. If I tried, I just took delivery of some brand new SX70R PCBs. And that means we will be upgrading the SLR680 uh, original PCB that is on this camera to have some manual control over Bluetooth and of course that lovely brand new sensor. And that does mean that we're going to need to remove the original PCB from this camera. Now, as I mentioned before, uh, I would say at some stage this camera has clearly had some work done to it. I'm just going to record a little bit of footage so that you guys can see. Um, but basically it definitely has signs that someone else has been in here soldering long before I got to the thing. So this is certainly a technician solder. This is definitely not anything from the factory. Um, they didn't do the best job, <laughs> but it's decent enough. And I would say this PCB originally belonged on an SX-70 sonar. And you can tell because it's got the blobs of solder at the top that would normally go to the little panel on the sonar that gives you the underexposure light, the little warning light that comes on. Uh, you can see where they've scraped off the original capacitor and replaced it with an SLR680 capacitor. So yeah, this PCB will be going anyway. But I thought I would just point out some of those little interesting tidbits. Uh, I'm just going to use wick to completely remove as much of the old solder as I can. And when I put in the new PCB, one of the things I'm going to check is actually how well those legs on the solenoid line up, because they're not exactly super straight on this PCB, which makes me wonder, has the solenoid on this camera been swapped out at some stage? Maybe? It's hard to know. This thing was so beat up when I got it. Realistically, all that I'm salvaging from this thing is the shutter assembly and the sonar and the flash. Everything else is being replaced with parts from a completely different camera. So I'm just getting off all, well, as much of the old, um, as much of the old solder as I can. And now just very carefully, I want to try and lift this ribbon cable. Very gently. I don't want to damage this ribbon. Here we go. Cool. Great. All right. And now we can start to take off 
the other pieces, but yeah, it looks like this solenoid is just sitting ever so slightly to the left. Well, at least from this angle, when the camera is upside down. So yeah, I'm just gonna check that because the solenoid does have a little bit of wiggle room. And I wanna make sure when the new PCB is in here that it's aligned properly. trace just completely lifted off, but that's fine. This PCB is for spare parts anyway, and if I ever needed to install this in a client's camera, I would just bodge that trace. Uh, but this is kind of what happens. This camera has certainly been repaired before, and there's only so many times you can solder and resolder components before things start to fail. Here we go, I'll shimmy that board off. And yeah, I would say that this solenoid is not quite sitting in the correct position. So I'm just gonna loosen that screw. And the solenoid, it literally just wiggles backwards and forwards about one or two millimeters, that's it. So when I put the new PCB in, I'm actually gonna align it properly so that it lines up with the pads on the new board. Yeah, it's um, look, it's not ideal that so much work has already been done to this camera. The, uh, the little legs on this poor ribbon cable. Look how they massacred my boy. Okay, that's a little bit better. Uh, there's really nothing to clean back here. It's looking very, very nice. So I'm just going to install the new PCB. Now, there is different firmware for SLR680s and SX70 sonar cameras. It has to do with how the flash works between the two models. So I've already flashed the very freshest firmware. And on that subject, I actually just wanna say how nice it is to work with uh, Yongmin on the SX70R project, because he really does take feedback well and he actually improves the products. I found the other day that there was actually a bit of a bug in his SLR680 code, uh, which actually just resulted in some cameras not functioning properly. Um, it was, it, it only seemed to affect some SLR680, so I'm assuming it has something to do with just very subtle differences to the way that perhaps the sonar mechanism or the flash mechanism worked. And I found that some SLR680s ended up with really underexposed photos, whereas some SLR680s were totally fine. I told him about this problem and within 24 hours, he'd completely fixed and updated the firmware for me. So that's really cool stuff. So yeah, all the feedback that I can actually give him, like he takes on board and makes changes, which is really nice to see. Um, I have worked, well, not really worked with, but I've, I've participated in like beta testing of other Polaroid related projects that hasn't been so nice. Um, I won't go into details, but I had like one person that I was dealing with, he made a product. And when I suggested a few ways that he could improve it, he got like really defensive and was like, oh, well, it's too late now. I've already had the molds made up and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, whoa, buddy. Why'd you ask for my help then? <laughs> Why'd you ask for feedback? Um, whereas Youngman, he's like, yeah, I totally get what you're saying. That's junk, it doesn't work. Let's improve it. Uh, and that's really cool. Very refreshing. All right. Now I just gotta make sure nothing there is being bridged. Looks good to me. Uh, this particular PCB that Youngmin has sent me is already pre-tinned, which is why I'm not bothering tinning anything. In case you're wondering, it's why I'm not bothering with flux or things like that. 
the solder basically just sticks. All right. Now the fiddly part, the sonar ribbon cable. Just making sure I melt all the solder and then push the ribbon down. Uh, in case it's not obvious, please only tackle a project like this if you're quite good at soldering. Um, someone made a comment in a few videos ago that was like, oh, you know, I appreciate you, uh, you know, trying to look out for newbies and encouraging them, you know not to do these kind of repairs. He said, but you know, let people learn from their mistakes. And well, while that may be a one way of learning and potentially a noble way of learning, um, I'd rather you guys just don't learn from your mistakes. <laughs> I've already done that. That's why I'm doing these videos. I've done the hard yards. I've put the effort in. I've learned from my mistakes. That's why I'm showing everyone else. If you want to ignore my advice and gung ho go into it, that's fine, I ain't gonna stop you, but just be aware you'll break something or you may hurt yourself. And I'm not responsible for that. Um, but certainly, I don't wanna discourage people from trying, but I would say like, if you haven't soldered anything before, like don't make an SX-70 with its frail components and ancient circuitry. Like don't make this your first project. Like go to an electronics store, get yourself like a little hobby kit and try that first, like see if you can, you know, solder together a simple project. See if this is for you. Um, you know, not everyone is hands-on. Some people should be as hands-off as possible. Just like not everyone is artistic. Not everyone's great at painting. Not everyone's great at writing music. People have their own strengths. Certainly soldering can be a bit of an art form. Um, and if you've never done it before, don't dive into the deep end, right? Grab yourself a little hobby kit, see if it's for you, and then try it. And then come back to a project like this once you're sure that you've built your skill set up. That's what I would recommend people do. And it's I'm not trying to discourage anyone by any stretch of the imagination. Oh my god, these these legs. Jeez Louise. I think this ribbon cable has really seen better days. Well, we certainly know if part of this is not getting power, we know what the fault is. Yeah, I'd say whoever worked on this 680 last, their iron was just way too hot. Like they're just, they've mushed everything. Ah, ay, ay, ay. I often get worried about people seeing like the aftermath of such repairs and wondering if I did this. But you guys are my witness. This wasn't my fault, man. I'm just dealing with, <laughs> dealing with what was left, left over. Here we go. Um, yeah, sometimes I, I try and do things as neat as possible, but I do worry about other repairers seeing my work when I've started off at a disadvantage by having to refix someone else's repairs. And if they see that in the future, they may wonder, wow, that guy really can't solder. It's like, no, it wasn't my fault. It was the other repairer before me. So I'm, I'm really doing the best that I can with the ribbon cable that I have. I'm gonna try and make this as neat as I can humanly do this. <sighs> Try and push that into position. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, man. Either that, or I may just try see if I have a different ribbon cable, but I think I'm out of stock of good ones. Nearly there.
Great. Well, that's the neatest dog's breakfast that I can come up with here. <laughs> I will just continuity test everything here before I, before I button this up. Because it's not amazing. All right. Just grab a multimeter on continuity mode. It's going to beep if there's a connection. So if we... That's going to work. All right. Yep. Great. Let's try pin two. Great. Oh, pin two is not even connected, but. Great. Pin four. Pin five. Pin six. And of course, pin seven. Wonderful. All right. She works. And it ended up fairly neat, if I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. Um, much better than I anticipated. Great. All right, now we need to grab some insulation tape and of course insulate the electric eye. And then I think we are ready to test fit and install this onto that spare uh, SX-70 sonar body that I have. So leaving the little firmware ports exposed. I'm going to put black electrical tape over the electric eye. Reason being is that this helps shield the electric eye from any kind of outside light. And I'm just going to grab some alcohol and just really make sure that all that flux that I've left behind is clean. especially where the little shutter buttons are. Great. And I can tighten up that solenoid screw now. Oh, I already did that. Cool. All right. Now this should, once we install it onto this body, it should just come to life and work as expected. So I'm gonna grab just at least two screws to put the shutter on. And I will just also insulate the other side as well, uh, especially the little, um, the little pads on the sonar ribbon, you don't really want those shorting out because it can cause all kinds of really bizarre behavior with the autofocus mechanism. So I'm just going to insulate that too. And just a little bit more along the top. Great. All right, moment of truth, guys. Is this thing gonna work? That's one side. Just line up the second side. All right, 
Now off camera, I found a chrome shutter housing to match from my spare parts. This came off another SX70 Sona. And we will just, I'm just gonna fairly roughly solder on this ribbon, just tack it in place. I'll come back and do it neatly once I know this thing works. Brilliant. Absolutely wonderful. So there's a few things now that I need to do just to finalize this. Of course, I need to put the uh, front housing on the flash assembly. Um, actually, let's just test that flash assembly. Oh, I can hear it come to life. Red LED has gone on. It's just charging up. Beautiful. Well, that works really nicely. So yeah, I have to put the uh, front flash housing back on. Uh, I'm just gonna discharge the flash before I do anything further. There we go. And what else do I need to do? Oh yeah, then I need to put the bottom panel back on. Uh, I will re-solder that ribbon cable so that it's looking nice. And that should basically cover it. The last thing that I need to do is find my spare uh, logo panel for the top flash housing. Um, but yeah, I reckon I'm gonna go box all this up now and then I'll be back in a second to try and show you guys the finished results. Well, that took a small eternity. <laughs> it is actually the next day now, and uh, I ended up spending the entire day working on this thing. Uh, and actually discovered something that, as far as I can tell, nobody knows about the Polaroid SLR 680. Uh, not even Yongmin Lu, who created the SX70R PCB. Now, Turns out this isn't the first SLR680 that I've built using the new SX70R PCB that's been prone to underexposing photos, and I haven't been able to figure out why. I assumed it was part of a, a code issue, because the SLR680, when you do the uh, SX70R PCB, does require its own firmware. Uh, however, I got Carlisle to go through all the code with a fine-tooth comb. No bugs there. Although we did find a small bug in the flash timing, but we fixed that. Um, but it turns out that it would appear that the SLR680 has two variations on the shutter blade design. One variation that requires the standard SX70 tuning of the solenoid, which is this part here that fires the shutter blades. And on an SX70, basically it needs to go from the closed position to the open position in about 40 milliseconds. Well, it seems that on some SLR680s, the opening in the middle of the shutter blades is a little bit smaller. And as a result, that solenoid needs to be tuned to roughly 20 milliseconds instead. I had no idea about this. Neither did Yongmin or Carlisle, whatever he prefers to be called. Neither did anyone else. <laughs> so after 13 years, it just goes to show I am still learning and you guys can learn along with me. But after tearing my hair out all day yesterday, recalibrating this and shooting about six packs of film in order to dial it in properly, I am happy to say that the Chrome SLR680 with SX70R PCB is complete. Now, I ended up putting the original logo back on the camera, the one where the paint was all half rubbed off, and I decided to go 
the whole hog and completely remove all traces of the paint, you can still see the original Polaroid SLR 680 embossing. But I decided to do that in order to keep it in line with the standard SX70 sonar color scheme. Because the standard SX70 sonar just had a black housing, there was no rainbow logos in the 70s just yet uh, on the folding cameras. And so basically all that it says is that this is an SX70 land camera with sonar autofocus, which is technically true. It's just that this now has a flash added as well. And I am happy to say that this thing works completely fine. I ended up taking comparison photos using manual metering and the automatic mode, and they are for all intents and purposes identical. So I'm super stoked. I ended up testing it uh, with flash. I ended up testing it with oh, left, right, center, any which way that I could to make sure that this thing was calibrated. Uh, the flash cam assembly also needed calibrating in this camera, which means that basically every single part of that junk 680 needed fixing. <laughs> um, and the last thing that I discovered is the autofocus mechanism. The lens labeling, so the little distances around the lens, were not calibrated correctly. Infinity was sitting slightly askew so that the actual lens, when you focused it on something, uh, wasn't in the correct position. They had actually put the true infinity at the park position. And so each time you went to autofocus, it would actually focus forwards slightly. So very frustrating, took me all day, but the good news is this camera is completely working now. It has uh, added to the knowledge of the SX70R community. It works with the dedicated dongle. Uh, of course, you can't insert the dongle, but you can use it like a remote control. Now this should be film in here. Well, an empty pack. Oh, <laughs> whoops. Turns out there was film in there. That surely had to be the, the last photo. I had no idea. Nope, there's another one in there, so I won't be wasting any more film. Um, but yeah, that was a one second exposure, just showing you on the remote that everything functions. And uh, yeah, I think this thing turned out really, really nicely. It looks absolutely amazing. It performs absolutely amazing now that everything is calibrated properly. Um, and most importantly, it means that Building SLR 680s with the manual control PCB from this point forwards, we will be able to calibrate for any variation of the 680 that comes our way. So yeah, I'm super stoked with how this turned out. Um, I mean, just look at this thing. It looks amazing. I ended up going for tan leather because tan leather, I think the chrome and tan is just such an iconic color combination and it really looks good with this particular 680. Um, let me know in the comments below what you think about the finished result. I hope you really dig it. Um, I'll try and show some B-roll footage of this particular camera and the finished results uh, while I edit together this video. And yeah, I hope you found this interesting. This video took a lot of weird twists and turns. Um, I ended up going down a rabbit hole and lost an entire day of work, but I'm very glad in the end. It was one of those things where I was both frustrated at the same time, but also glad at the end that I was able to figure it out. And yeah, through doing this, I can now add information to the SX70 community because I have not seen it documented anywhere Neither has any other technician that I told this about yesterday and I spoke to as I spoke to several after I figured out the issue and no one had a single clue that there are two pneumatic settings, one for some variants of the 680 and one for the SX70. So I'll probably do a video on the pneumatic adjustment of the solenoid uh, at some stage in the future, but it is an insanely complicated topic. Um, 
But yeah, this thing will go up for sale now, so I will be selling this camera. Um, obviously, have a look at when this video was released. If you happen to be watching this video years from now, please, please don't comment and ask if it's still for sale if you're watching this in like 2032, because um, it is very likely long gone. Uh, but if you are watching this and you're one of the first people to make a comment, then feel free to get in touch and nab it for yourself. Um, but yeah, I'm just very glad to be finished with this silly thing. Uh, as always, thank you for watching. I hope you found this video entertaining on some level. And as always, if you would like me to service one of your cameras, please feel free to get in touch. I'm happy to upgrade your 680 to the SX70 RPCB. If you provide me with a sonar body, I'm happy to make you a Chrome SLR 680 like you see this one here. And uh, yeah, if you can't support me directly, feel free to buy me a beer or two using the links below, or just give me a like and a subscribe. Everything that you do helps out my little channel, and I will see you guys in the next video.